All right, I'm gonna go ahead and review coal and then we'll move on to oil and natural gas. So yesterday we talked about coal. We had the different phases um, or the different stages. Um, you'll notice that they go in alphabetical order, but backwards. So we have P, L, um, B for subbituminous, and then A. So that's an easy way to remember them. On the multiple choice parts of the AP exam, I have seen this before where they've asked um, what's the correct order of formation. Um, it was on an older exam, so I'm not saying they will necessarily ask something like that on uh, future AP exams. They're definitely going towards less memorization and more using your knowledge to figure out stuff. So um, just keep that in mind. Uh, we saw that the United States has some of the largest coal reserves and that coal's really dirty. So when it's burned, it's really quite dirty. Um, it causes a lot of air pollution and a lot of uh, air uh, quality issues. So we're gonna move on to oil, uh, crude oil, or sometimes it's called petroleum. So can you think of anywhere in the world where we have oil or petroleum? Can you think about what do we use oil for? Have you heard anything about it in the news? So petroleum oil, all right, it occurs underground and it's liquid. So that's what you need to know. It's a liquid that's underground, okay? It's a mixture of, it's got water, sulfur, hydrocarbons, that's just carbon. All of these fossil fuels are gonna have carbon because they're made from dead animals, right? Marine plants and animals. So it's used in uh, vehicles. So you buy, you use oil for your car, you use oil for um, trucks and boats and those types of things. We also use it for machinery. It contains natural gas. And we're gonna learn about natural gas. On the previous slide, I had a picture, um, I had oil, so this is oil, right? But natural gas, you might have a gas stove or you've seen a gas stove like this before. Um, but natural gas, and we're gonna talk about that. But mostly it's a liquid, okay? It doesn't contain the gas. It's used to make gasoline, which we know all about because it runs our cars and uh, machinery and engines, but it's also used to make a lot of products, including a lot of plastics. Um, I have a list of a bunch of petroleum products that I want you to take a look at. I'm gonna flip off of here. Here's a bunch of products, okay? Ink, bicycle tires, dresses and clothing. A lot of the um, synthetic or man-made fabrics that you guys wear, like a lot of um, pants and a lot of shirts are made from cotton or uh, polyester, but some of it's from man-made stuff. Um, nylon and some of the stretchy materials, they actually have petroleum in them. Uh, vitamin capsules, dyes, life jackets, rubbing alcohol, um, Vaseline and petroleum jelly, tape, clothesline, soap. Virtually everything in your household has oil or petroleum in it because it's so versatile, okay? So we use it for tons and tons of different things. How is it formed? It's formed like any other fossil fuels, right? Um, Sea plants and animals died, they're buried on the ocean floor, and over time, right, sand and silt covers them, and heat and pressure converts them into oil and gas. So usually we've got to dig down to get oil and gas. Either it's deep down in the ocean or it's deep down below a bunch of rock, okay? So same way we get any other fossil fuels. This is not unique to petroleum. So one thing I just want you to write off to the side, um, if we look at this coal, this is how much coal we have left to last us, how much natural gas and how much oil, and this is worldwide. So you'll notice oil has the smallest amount left. We're expected to run out of oil in about 50 years. So within your lifetime, which is kind of scary because what are we gonna do when we run out of oil? Well, that's anyone's guess. Um, we're obviously going to have to transition to some other renewable resources uh, or renewable energy sources like wind or solar energy and that type of thing.
So if we take a look, which areas of the world have the most petroleum or the most crude oil, you probably already knew this, even if you didn't think you did, but the Middle East. This is where we get a lot of our oil from. And if there's a lot of conflict in the Middle East, that changes our gas prices or our oil prices. So we do see our gas prices go up and down a lot. And it all has to do a lot of it with how much oil the Middle East has and if they're in a bunch of conflict or a bunch of war or there's a bunch of stuff going on over there or not. You will see we do have some in North America. So we've talked about oil drilling um, and there's been oil spills or the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. So we do drill oil here, Oklahoma, Texas, they drill oil as well. All right, so what are some of the advantages? It's convenient, easy to use, energy dense. Um, so mainly it's, it's just pretty easy, easy to use, just like coal, really easy to use, okay? Problems though, when we burn it, releases CO2, just like most other fossil fuels, right? All the other fossil fuels release carbon. We talked about leaks and spills. So if we're drilling oil and there's a big leak, I'll show you this picture, right? We talked about like these oil spills underwater, um, if a pipe bursts and then how it can affect the marine life, that's a really big problem. So leaks and spills when extracted. And then there's also health risks for um, individuals near oil fields, just because that oil can contaminate water and can lead to a variety of other health conditions. So I showed you the list of petroleum products, lots of different ones. Um, we talked about the oil spills. So just to review, on your note sheet, you have like the Deepwater Horizon, Gulf of Mexico oil spill, Exxon Valdez, that's when that oil tanker um, struck a reef and spilled a bunch of its oil. Those are just examples of oil spills. We went over those. It was, I kind of put it on there as a duplicate thing. So don't worry too much about those. This is just a reminder. They like to talk about how do you clean up oil spills. We talked about booms, right? Booms are these big like buoys that kind of capture it. Skimmers, this is like a skimmer. You might have seen one of these like on a lake um, pulling up a bunch of seaweed. So skimmers skim the surface of the water. You can use like absorbent stuff, so like sponges. You can burn it. Um, and then you can also use bioremediation. Remember, this is using microorganisms to eat up the oil, eat up the bad stuff. So that's just kind of a review. Now we're going to move to natural gas. Remember I said that oil contains a little bit of this gas inside of it, this natural gas. So it's a gas and it's made up of methane, but it also has other gas inside of it. You may have heard of like a butane lighter or a propane tank. Those are all just forms of natural gas. Okay, so it's formed from fossil fuels, but it's just a gas instead of a liquid. You can see some of the different types of gases that we find in natural gas. Many people have natural gas in their homes, so they use it um, for, you might have a gas burner like I showed you, or a fireplace, or a furnace, or a heater. Um, you might have a grill that has a propane tank attached to it. That's a terrible tank, but um, a tank attached to it. So. Um, your home uses natural gas too. Some people's homes use more natural gas than others. Um, some of them are not connected to natural gas and some of them do use natural gas. So this is a gas. So advantages, this is the cleanest of all fossil fuels because it doesn't actually emit any ash, no particulate matter. It also doesn't emit sulfur, okay? but it still has carbon, it still has methane, so it's still a problem, okay? But it's the cleanest because it doesn't, like when we burn it, it doesn't produce a lot of like ash or soot. So disadvantages, what are some of the problems though? Methane, back here we said it's made mostly of methane. Remember methane's a greenhouse gas? So that means it's going to increase the temperature of our planet. And if you remember back to, we talked about CO2. CO2 has a 
warming potential of 1. Methane has a warming potential of 24. So methane is 24 times more powerful at trapping heat than CO2. The other problem um, is that it uses fracking. We're going to talk about fracking. It sounds like a really weird word that probably should be, I don't know, a swear word or something. Um, but fracking is drilling with water, sand, and chemicals. This is how they get the gas out of the ground. And I'm going to show you how exactly it works. So fracking, sand, chemicals, water to release gas. Um, and this can ultimately contaminate the groundwater. So here's how this works, okay? Step one, 40,000 gallons of chemicals and water and sand create this flacking, fracking fluid, okay? So they dig this well, here's our well, and they inject this fluid down. It's pressure injected through a pipeline, okay? So I'm actually gonna move this up. So it's through this pipeline and once we get it into this pipeline, think of taking like a syringe and pushing all of this stuff down into the earth. Okay, so this is super deep down. We're into like the bedrock here. Remember we talked about the different layers of the soil, the A and the B and the O horizon, all of those. And what happens is when it reaches the end, it creates all these little cracks because there's so much pressure. It creates all these cracks in the rock. And in the rock, this is where the natural gas is hiding. Okay, so the gas, here's a close-up up here. The rock and sand is right here, and it cracks, and all the little gas flows back into this opening, okay? Then what they do is all this gas is in this fluid now, okay? And so then they take the fluid and they bring it back up to the top, and they actually are able to get this gas out of the fluid. And then they put the fluid here and the gas goes to a holding tank, okay? And one of the problems you'll notice is that this well goes through the groundwater. So this groundwater can actually get contaminated with one, all the chemicals they used here to inject, or two, a bunch of like the natural gas as well. And we're mostly concerned about the chemicals here. Whoa. So there are a lot of fracking accidents that have happened. Um, you can see this is a map of all the places where there's been accidents. So I'm gonna pull this up really quickly um, as long as it loads. And we can take a look around us to see what exactly has been going on. So over here, we can uh, take a look, Michigan, a gas pipeline ruptured, causing more than 500 people to be evacuated from their homes, okay? Um, farmer said that TransCanada advised him that his three acres of potato may be contaminated, okay? So there's one just around the corner in Michigan. Here's one in Oakdale. Um, he was talking about he lives across the street from a fracking sand plant, and he says your clothes are full of it, you roll down your car windows, you can feel it in your nose, and it says the fracking powder contains crystalline silica, which is hazardous when inhaled. So a lot of health um, effects from this fracking uh, and uh, the potential to contaminate a lot of different things. So that's fracking. I'm going to have you watch a quick video um, and about the pros and cons of fracking, and then that will be it.